Okay, thank you, thank you very much for everyone's patience, and it's it's very late. It's it's very late, especially in Chinese time. Okay, <laughs> China time, sorry. And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, here I'd like to share in this talk. I'd like to share to, uh, some benchmark and um, streaming benchmark things to which can help the end user to understand the modern distributed system, streaming system. So okay. Um, before all, I'd like to, thank, uh, to say thank you to all the development team, and especially highly appreci appreciate those uh, appreciate to those uh, advisors, including TD, Sai Sai, and Xiang, and also, also Tianlun, uh, who really gives us a lot of uh, helps and gu guides, and, it, and not only in the development period, and but also in the experiment period. Okay, now let's start from the self introduction. And uh, about us. So we are the engineer team from the Intel Big Data, Big Data Technology who are focusing on the Spark development for a long time. And we are so closely partnered with, the, during, in the past, we are so closely partnered with the large websites and also some ISVs for better Spark usage. So while listening to those maybe feedbacks or requirements and also even some pain points from our customer. We are, tr we are not trying to help them to solve the problem, to have the better usage. We are also have a lot of contrib key contributions for the Spark project itself. And we hope it to make it more easy to use or more, more sca scalable or with better performances. And at the same time, we are, we are develop several utilities to serve our daily work. So here, take, uh, here we just have some example. In the last month, we have just released Highbench 4.0. Basically, Highbench is the cross-platform microbenchmark suite for big data. And another example is we we have the self-developed developed, uh, high meet tool called High Meter. Basically, it is the lightweight work workflow-based big data performance NS tool. We use it to provide different kinds of Spark application and also to find maybe some improvement area in the Spark project itself. And uh, so if you are interested in those utilities or those work, you can welcome to Intel Boost and you can explore more information there. Okay, here's the agenda. So it's very simple. The first thing we will talk about, what's, the, uh, what's our motivation? Why we have such kind of benchmark tool for streaming system? The second one is about what does streaming bench look like? What's the streaming stream bench? What's the inside? And the last one we will talk about how to use the Spark stream, how to use the streaming bench for different different kinds of streaming system, especially for Spark streaming. Okay, in China there is an, an old saying called "time is gold," and or "time is money." So. I find it is very suitable for, it's well suitable for the big data area. And now big data has already been involved into another, a new stage for speed. So along with the, along with the emerging trends, emerging thing, just like for example IoT, we found that there is a bunch of data which are really flooding into the data center. And maybe every device is sorry, each device, each machine, or each human being is generating the big data, in, is generating the streaming data in uh, all kinds of format. So accordingly, the data scientists or the data analysts need to dig out more profits from all those various streams in a real-time manner. And another phenomenon we found is, we call that streaming plus X or streaming plus something. So we found that more and more people are trying to combine the streaming processing with the maybe an analytical query or with some complex graph or machine learning algorithm. So along with all those new trends or new phenomena, so we, find, uh, we, we also received a lot of maybe question, challenging, challenging questions from our partner or customer. So we conclude those things in the next slide. The first thing is how, how, how to select a proper streaming platform. So what kind of streaming platform is suitable for us, especially suitable for our certain kind of streaming application? The second one is 
So is the streaming system, maybe stream system reliable? Um, what, how does it perform when the, when the failure happens? The third one is, what kind of key tuning knob or key factors will impact the, the, the final streaming application's performance? The last one is, how to properly allocate or select uh, the right resources for my streaming application or for my streaming system? Or, on, or maybe another word, so what's the basic resources usage for certain streaming system or certain streaming application? So all those questions are very tough, are very difficult for us to answer. So at that time, we are thinking about why not to have a measurement tool to help the end user to solve this problem by themselves. So here, the stre streaming bench is born. Basically, streaming bench is the streaming benchmark utility consists of several micro workloads. So, in, in, uh, according, uh, so we hope it can help the end user to first to understand the various streaming system and the second to, to try to catch what kind of knobs or what kind of factor are very important for your streaming maybe streaming system or streaming application. The third one is we hope to end user can understand the, what's the resource allocation, what's the resource usage for different kinds of system or different kinds of application. And on the other side, we hope it can somehow help the systems developer can make the stream system better and better. So whenever a new release or whenever a new feature is coming. So that's the high level target for the stream system. Now let's take a look at the Take a look at stream stream bench. So, so streams. So here, stream bench consists of seven micro workloads. So by two categories. The first category is the stateless computation. Maybe it is very simple. Um, it, it, for example, the identity, the sampling, or the projection or graph. All those operations are trying to transfer the input stream into another or different outputs. And uh, here I won't go through, go, go through those rational one by one. Another, another category is the stateful computation. Maybe it is a little bit more com complex than the previous one. Um, but because it, because it involves maybe several steps, several comp com computation steps, or maybe it in, uh, the most important thing is it involves the historical status. And uh, regarding the input data, we choose the two data source collection. And the first one is in the text format, and the other one is in the numeric format. And uh, all those input data are with different record size. Okay, now let's take a look at the architecture inside. So here, the entire benchmark system have the two parts. The first one is the offline data prepar preparation. So for the data preparation, uh, we have several generators with what, what are working in a, in a distributed manner. And for each generator thread, it will read from a single seed file. And, uh, and the each generator will emit those input data uh, in a random order. And uh, you can configure the scale factor for all those generators. And all those generators are sending those data to Kafka cluster in a parallel mode. And here, the, we, use the, we, we use the Kafka collector, sorry, Kafka cluster as the, as, the, as, the as the message producing, as the streaming producer. So because we, so we see most of our customer or partner uh, are frequently used Kafka as the message pool, or maybe it is not message pool, or maybe it is called maybe circle buffer. I just learned from the COVID in the last session. Okay, so after we prepare those streaming data beforehand, so we will we can launch the streaming system for the test purpose, and we deploy those streaming application on top of a streaming system on top of either the cloud environment or the experimental cluster. And uh, finally, it can get the totally five, five stores, including the throughput, 
the latency and also the throughput latency penalty factor. Here, the throughput latency penalty factor uh, try to describe the, the performance, especially when some failure happens for the streaming system. We will do the fault injection uh, while the processing, in the middle of the uh, data processing and get the rough idea, so how stable, how reliable for those streaming system. And uh, the fault torrent is very important, especially important for the, the modern, modernized the distributed streaming system. And the last one is availability ratio. We, we, we will run a long life uh, test and to understand the, the system is stable, reliable, uh, so enough. So basically that's the entire architecture for the streaming bench. Okay, so, so basically after all those, all those maybe high level conceptual information, so here we will, we will show some examples and show, show some case. So here we'd like to, to try to solve those, those problems or those questions by showcasing how to, how to explore the answer by the, by the user themselves. And actually they are not the exact answer to you, but somehow we need to show you, we need to show you the way to leading, uh, leading to the final answer. So now let's take a look how to use it to get your answer. Okay, here is the, here just is the system and the test. We'll have a, let, let's go through the hardware and the software part. So it is a really small cluster. We have three Kafka nodes and a three streaming system. And uh, of course we have an additional, additional one, maybe a master or driver node. And uh, regarding the software part, uh, we, would, we try our best to keep all those, all those configuration as default and uh, just to play as the new user. So if you're a new user, you, you maybe you, you don't know, you, you totally have no idea about the streaming system and uh, how, how, to, how, 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 how could you pl play with that. Um, and here we also highlight those changes and uh, other than the default value. For example, we change the memory size, we change the parallelism for each worker and uh, for, especially for those mini batch or match batch system, we change the batch size. Uh, here we, change, we, we, we configured Trident batch size as 500 megabytes. It's a very large number, right? 500 megabytes uh, per, uh, for each partition. And for streaming system, we have the one second as the batch duration. And uh, we also have some limited uh, maximum rate for per partition to control, so, so do some, somehow do, do the flow control to ensure each batch job can be finished in less than one second. And for the storm, we change the topology max spot pending number so that we can avoid a certain maybe unstable phenomenon. And the last one, we use the Kafka direct mode. So we will have more discussion about Kafka direct mode in the later part. So that's the system and the test. Okay, now let's, let's go move on for the next, move on to the next page to see the results. Now let's revisit the first, revisit the first question. So how to select a proper streaming, streaming platform? And here we run all of the workloads on top of different kinds of streaming system. I mean the different, so for most of the popular streaming system. And uh, we, we collect here, in this page we collect the throughput score for different kinds of, system, different kind of system respectively. And uh, so you can see, for, for example, the first thing is about the Spark streaming. And here we use the, Spark, the Kafka direct mode in Spark streaming. And as I mentioned, we also control the, uh, the maximum receive rate uh, for Spark streaming to ensure that each, each job, I mean each batch job can be finished in, inside of each batch duration. And according to our observation, so we can get the, max, uh, the maximum throughput is, uh, is around the one, 1700 megabytes per second. And it is roughly about 2.5 to three times of treatment, especially in those stateless workload. So we, we see the network, network bandwidth becomes the bottleneck at first in, the, in this kind of workload on top of Spark streaming. And uh, uh, on the other side, we find it is, the performance score is quite close to Trident in those stateful workloads. And uh, according to other experiments, we found that maybe it is called by the partition, the concurrency 
for the Kafka side. So the Kafka's, Kafka's partition number is not big enough to stress the entire system, I mean the streaming system. And the second one is about Trident. So here we use the 500, meg, uh, 500 megabytes as the fetch size, and we get the, we get the results, it's about 20 times of the storm. And we find if we, of course you can increase that set fetch size, I mean the batch size, but since the system has already hit the network abound, so even you increase the, those fetch size, the total throughput score doesn't increase. Uh, another finding is for storm. So here the storm is not perform, perform well, not, not very, very well, right? Because we turn on the echo here. So uh, according to another experiment, uh, we find if we turn off that echo, you can get nine times speed up on storm system. But it is, those echoes will be turned on by default for the reliability concern. And uh, another funny is uh, when we have the large scale factor, we find the word count application failed on both storm and trident. But if we use the small factor, I mean small data factor, we can see both workload, uh, sorry, the, uh, both system can, 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 can get the correct performance score. And here is SAMHSA. SAMHSA is just uh, in a very, so I mean the benchmark for SAMHSA is in a very initial stage. So it is under the experiment phase. So here we just have the two workload implementation for SAMHSA. One is the identity, another is the, another is the uh, word count. And according to the observation, we found that um, the SAMHSA is about three times of storm in identity workload. And uh, it is quite close to sparse streaming in the word count workload. And uh, that's, 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 the, that's the rough idea for the throughput. Now let's take a look at another important key, another important key score, which is the latency. And uh, according to our observation, um, the storm, of course, has the lowest response time. It's about, it's, it's most of the, for, for most of the workloads, it can finish the in sub-second. And we also find if we, uh, we, also, we also find, it, of course, if we, we, turn, if we increase that uh, maximum spot pending number, we can have the higher super number, but the latency number will be increased, will be increased also. And for the spot streaming, since we control the batch duration as one second, so the total latency is about 1.5 second for each, for each batch. So, and, but it is, has a higher throughput score versus to other uh, streaming system. And here, the treatment we have, uh, we see it is, has highest latency number because we, we configure really a huge, I mean big, fetch size, it's about 500 megabytes per partition. And if we can, according to our version, if you can maybe have a smaller batch size and you can have a better latency number, but, of, but at the same time, your throughput will be dropped. And uh, so that's all for the latency part. But the key learning, the key, the key point here is how to use the benchmark, benchmark tool to have the right answer is not just to give the top list to pick up the best one. The most important thing is for you maybe to understand what's your expectation, what's your, maybe what's your requirement, and then map your requirement to the performance score or to the system's capability. And that's the key point and the key learning for how to use the stream bench to get the answer by yourself. Okay, so since the time is limited, so I will I will, I will just skip the second, second question and let's go, let's go to the, the next one. And uh, what kind of factor can impact the stream system? So that's the most frequent question uh, from our partner or customer. So here we give some examples. The first one, we, we try to compare the Kafka direct mode for spa streaming and versus to the, versus the old, old gener general receiver mode. So if you have already maybe not, uh, attended that Kobe's uh, talk, he, he will give a rough idea about what kind of Kafka direct mode. So basically it is high level it leveraged the uh, um, low level API for, Kaf for Kafka to, to, to have the high availability in spa streaming 
and it is introduced, it, it is the experiment feature introduced in 1.3 release. And uh, while the other, I mean the old receiver mode is more general for all kinds of streaming source. So that's the difference. And uh, according to our test result, the observation you can find, the Kafka direct mode can significantly through, increase the throughput number versus to those receiver node if we turn off the right hand log. And uh, we can see the Kafka direct mode can easily saturate the network bandwidth. Even we have already equipment, it, it, sorry, equipped 10 gig NIC for those test nodes. And uh, maybe, well, so maybe it, we, are, we are really thinking about the, the reason, maybe we, it, it's the serializing things because we need to serialize things and uh, deserialize things and again to, 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 to do the, uh, uh, sorry, deserialize de de and then to do the computation. So maybe it is, uh, so that's why we found, it. but at least we, the, here are the conclusions. So, so Kaf, by using the Kafka direct mode, you can have the higher super number. Okay, the second example is about right hand log. So uh, just as I mentioned, the right hand log is purpose for the, uh, purpose for the, uh, the high av availability. So uh, it is introduced in maybe the release number 1.2. And uh, so there is a lot of, lot of uh, question from the end user. So when we turn on this feature, will it hurt the final, maybe the throughput or latency score? And uh, so here we release the results. So we compare the, the receiver mode uh, with writer head log on and off. We found there, there is no difference between two mode, uh, so, sorry, two configurations. So according to this observation, so you can you, so you don't hesitate to use to turn down that right hand log in, for Spark streaming. And another example here is we try to grow that partition number in the Kafka side. And uh, according to our finding, we 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 saw that the performance about uh, we saw the performance improvement about 67 percentage, and I mean the 67 percentage gains. So here, this example shows us. Maybe most of us are focusing on the maybe system, streaming system itself or streaming application itself. Sometimes you need to go back to your maybe data generator. Maybe it is lack of enough partition number. It is, cannot hundred stress your system. So it will hurt the total final performance at the same time. Okay, now let's see another example. Another example is about cryo. So according to the Sparks document, we are all, always recommended to turn on or to, or to use the cryo serialization, right? So here we also, to, we also do the benchmark for different configuration with cryo on and off, and also on top of different, uh, with, with different mode, both Kafka direct mode and also the receiver mode, yes. Especially for the receive mode, we can see the cryo serialization can bring certain throughput and also throughput in, 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 increase and also have short latency. But since I mentioned for the Kafka direct mode, especially for this workload, we, the, since the network is the bottleneck, so the serializer, the cryo serializer doesn't have another, doesn't change much, I mean, doesn't change your final score much. So according to those observations, so here is the key learning. So here, how to use the streaming bench to help you find or identify the key knob. The best way is you can simulate your workload uh, by using the stream bench, and then you can identify different knobs, you will try them and get the right answer. So that's the, that's the tips. Sorry, okay. Okay, let's skip that. Um, okay. Uh, maybe you maybe you have already lost, or maybe you have already forgotten. So, what's the conclusion? What's the conception of information? What's the inside the streaming bench? So, there are, there are dozens of things. Never mind. Here's the key takeaway for you, and uh, just to remember the URL. You can forget the, all those things I mentioned before. Just to remember this, okay? And uh, because we will add the streaming bench in the next major release for high bench. Okay, and the, the next thing is also very important. Uh, according to our experience, we found it is really difficult to, to tune or to benchmark the different streaming system. 
Uh, one thing is we found that we, we, there is still a lot of uh, improving area for the streaming bench itself. So we really need your help. So here, maybe you are the application developer, you are so familiar with your application or you're so familiar with the streaming pattern. Or maybe you are the contributor or developer for the streaming system. You are so fully understand what's inside of the system itself. And maybe all you just try, want to try, have a try for the streaming bench. So no matter what, who you are, we want to listen to your voice and learn from your maybe comments or feedback, it really helps. So that's all for my yeah, this talk. Uh, we have time for two questions. Uh, what's the side effect uh, or bad side effect of the Kafka direct mode uh, connecting to uh, Spark streaming? Second question is, uh, what did you discover about the relationship between the number of partition number of partitions in Kafka and the speed of processing in Spark? Okay. Okay. So the fir the first question is about the batch size, right? Yeah. Actually, uh, actually, in in this test, we we just uh, we just uh, uh, limited batch size to ensure this. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes, the direct mode, yeah. You mean, you mean the Kafka direct mode, right? Uh, and uh, also about the, the batch size for the direct mode, right? So uh, actually, so as, as I mentioned, for most of the thing, stateless workload, you can see the throughput, uh, I mean the network is the, is the first bottleneck, right? So we, we, have, we have two um, batch size, and one is for the uh, one second uh, batch duration, another is 20 second duration. So since the network is the bottleneck, so the total throughput doesn't show difference. So that's the first question. And uh, another one is about, sorry, uh, it's about, uh, uh, sorry, about what? Second question is. Uh, um, partition number. Yeah, right. partition number in Kafka. So what's the relationship <laughs> between the partition number and uh, the processing speed? Yeah, sorry, just for the jet flag. Uh, yes, the partition number. And uh, so according, uh, as I mentioned, we, we changed the partition number, but, but not the, every time it, 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 does, it, it can improve the performance. So especially for those stateless case, we find the network is saturated even with the tangy leak. So for those case, even you try maybe a higher partition number, it doesn't help a lot. But we find especially for those maybe uh, some work, work, work count or some complex or some stateful uh, operation, so we can have the have the speed up, but uh, maybe it is not li linear scale uh, uh, along with the partition number. That's the rough rough idea for this question. Okay. Okay. So uh, yeah, let's move the discussion offline. Okay. Uh, let's thanks. thank our speaker again. Thank you.